Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to use Reality Capture and Post Shot together inside Unreal Engine. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos on Gaussian splatting, you would see that I use a variety of tools to, to then use the XB3DGS plugin and import into Unreal Engine. Yesterday, PostShot announced an experimental Unreal Engine 5.4 plugin with the beta version of 0.4.81. We're going to give this a try and see how it works and also show you how to work seamlessly between Reality Capture, PostShot and Unreal. One of the reasons I like using PostShot over online tools in particular is the license agreement. And in particular, the use of data. You retain all rights and ownership of your content. You ensure that you have valid license to any content that you process or generate using PostShot. Jawset does not claim any ownership rights of such content. It's important to have a look at this when using any photogrammetry or Gaussian splatting software in this day and age. Okay, once I've accepted that, I'm going to install this with the Unreal plugin and see how we get on. The first thing I'm going to do is to use Reality Capture for my alignment. If you don't know what Reality Capture is, do check out some of my other videos. It's entirely free and I believe you also retain the rights to your data whilst using this. The first thing I'm going to do, once I've downloaded it using the Epic Launcher, is to go to my workflow and inputs. Here I'm going to align some pretty dimly lit images that I took at the Imperial War Museum. There is 336 images here. You can use a video if you want, bearing in mind that videos will give you a lower resolution. I generally use still images, but both workflows should be acceptable for what we're going to do. This car was scanned using my Xiaomi 13T Pro mobile camera. And the benefit of this camera is being able to change the shutter speed and the ISO manually. If your mobile phone allows you to do this and you know how to take a good shot, this is a good idea in ensuring none of the images have any blur whilst walking around it. The car itself, I believe, was from a marketplace bomb in Iraq that nobody took credit for. I don't know if there was any survivors, but the Imperial War Museum managed by an American artist to get a hold of it and place it in their main gallery. The lighting, as mentioned, is not perfect here and there is obvious shadows from the light source which will affect our final result. Once the inputs are in place, we will go to alignment and click align images and depending on the power of your GPU, we may wait for some time for this to happen. And we have an alignment. And what we will need to do now is export the point cloud as a PLY and the registration as a CSV. This needs to be done in the folder of the images themselves. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. For registration, ensure that internal and external camera parameters are placed in there. And we can go OK with the default settings. And to export the point cloud, we may need to make sure that this is saved as sparse point cloud as polygon file format. And in our settings here, ensure that ASCII export is set to false. Once this is done, we need to make sure that these two files are in the same folder as our main images, as mentioned before. And we should be ready to launch PostShot. If you've got antivirus like mine, you might have some problems and it will ask you to register an email address. Once we're done here, we can drag our entire folder straight in. Now I had a bunch of other stuff in my folder, so I've just copied all my images and my CSV and PLY into a new folder and I'm just going to drag this straight into PostShot. And here you've got a maximum splat count and a downsize images. I'm just going to go with the default for now and then let this do its training. And again, depending on your GPU, you might have to leave this for a while. My one is saying 13 minutes. 
let's leave it and see what happens. Now once the step limit has been reached, which took um, about 22 minutes on my computer, you can move around this and view it basically. So what you want to do is you want to use your scroll wheel to zoom in, your left mouse button to orbit and your middle mouse button to pan. You can also use your right mouse button to zoom in. So to crop, post shot really only has this tool here, which for some reason doesn't behave like it has before. For me, when I put the brush over here, it's up there somewhere. I don't know if this is a beta thing or I'm just being really stupid, but it doesn't really work for me. With this, what you're supposed to be able to do is just select bits here and then delete the, the bits that you don't want. But I'm going to go back on the history and show you another method that I use for cropping. What you can do is you can go up to the top right hand corner here and under here you can actually specify a crop box. So I'm going to just turn these off so we can see this properly. And there doesn't really seem to be any controls for this bit so after a lot of faffing about I believe I've got my crop. Now let me quickly show you something that I demonstrated in one of my earlier videos which is a really powerful web-based tool for cropping a little bit easier than, than what PostShot can offer. I'm going to go to Export Splat Model and then I'm going to show you Super Splat. And Super Splat, you can be found at this URL which I'll put in the comments below. You can just import your scene by going in here. And importing it in. And this has far better cropping tools that you can use here. If I go in here I've got a brush that actually works. Apologies to Jawset. Sure they're going to come up with something better. And once I've selected these I can just hit delete and delete those out. And I can also go in here to change into splat mode. Shift and right mouse button to orbit. Scroll wheel to zoom and right mouse button to pan and the left mouse button can be used for actually just selecting as well with a rectangular selection here and deleting some of these splats we don't need. And when we're kind of done playing around with this and cropping out what we need we can go back here and export this out by going to Scene, Save As. And what we want to do is to save it as a Gaussian Splat PLY file. And we should just be able to bring this into PostShot. And this time we'll go to Import and import that crop splat there. And that doesn't look too bad. I mean, I'm missing a bit off the side here, but. This should be fine for just a demonstration of what we're going to show. And what I'm going to do now is to save this off as a post shot scene, ready for import into Unreal. Now for Unreal, this plugin currently only works with 5.44. It should automatically install the plugin. I'm just going to click launch and just go ahead and create a first person or any of the other ones you want. And I'll go to create. I can't spell delete. Then I'm going to go into my edit plugins here and make sure that our plugin is installed. Draw set post shot. By default it is. Very useful. And what we should just be able to do here, I'm going to press control space to bring the content browser up. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do import. Just open your um, Gaussian splat file here. So I've got that and I'm just going to drag it in here. And there we have a terribly scaled, but generally okay, Gaussian splat in our scene. I'm just going to go in here with the object selected and just scale it down to about 0 0.25, which seems to be a more acceptable size. And just rotate and position it somewhere in my scene. Ready to go. So let's press play there. there we have it. 
or Gaussian splat of a burnt out car. Now I'll be doing future videos on this and you can also check out some of my previous videos on how to create collisions and so forth and how to crop with more precision. But I'll be doing some more videos in Gaussian splats and the Unreal workflow in upcoming videos. So please give me a like, a subscribe and hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.